Good morning. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Ellen Cusack. I'm on staff here. I'm the church administrator, and uh, I am really just so happy and blessed to be with you today. Um, I just can't believe it's a whole week after Easter and that um, this week will be May. Um, the only indication I have is that of that is that um, I can't find spiced jelly beans anywhere. So I guess I have to wait till next year. Um, well, last week, uh, Pastor Steve talked to us about how Jesus uh, wouldn't be caught dead uh, in the tomb. And we were able to celebrate uh, the resurrection of the Christ. And he conquered death. Amen? So during this time, um, in our passage, we're going to read that um, the church of Jerusalem was really starting to grow. And um, during this time, after Easter, Jesus had appeared to um, some of his followers. He had talked to them. He had eaten with some of them. Um, After 40 days, he ascended uh, into heaven uh, to be with God the Father. And then came Pentecost. Uh, the comforter promised uh, by Jesus arrived and came to rest on each believer. Um, The Holy Spirit filled uh, each one. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would come upon people, but then would leave, and now the Holy Spirit indwells us. And because of that, they were empowered to do his work and spread the gospel. Peter preached one day, and 3,000 people were saved. How amazing is that? Um, At this time, after Easter, the word says that the believers devoted themselves to the teachings of the apostles, uh, fellowship and prayer. Um, At this time, after Easter, wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. Um, At this time after Easter, they sold their possessions to give to those in need. And at this time after Easter, every day, the believers met in the temple courts for prayer. They broke bread together. They had communion, the Lord's Supper. And they ate together, praising God. And they enjoyed the favor of the people. And the Lord continued to add to their number each day those who were saved. Now, the resurrection changed many things, and it changed everything for the followers of Christ. Now they had the power of the Holy Spirit. So one day, uh, Peter and John were going to the temple for prayer, and a man who was physically handicapped from birth was begging and asked them for money. And Peter said to him, you know, I don't have silver and I don't have gold, but what I have, I can give to you. And he said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. And the beggar jumped to his feet and he began to walk and he followed Peter and John to the temple. And he was praising God. And the people recognized this man as a man who was brought there every day to beg. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at his healing. Well, this created quite a disturbance. Peter explained to the people in his message that it was Jesus' name and faith that had made this man whole. Well, the priests and the captain of the temple guard, who was responsible to keep order in the temple, and the Sadducees were really upset. Um, The Sadducees, a religious group, they didn't believe in the resurrection, so they were upset. Um, The priests didn't want to relinquish power um, because right now Christianity was still seen as an offshoot of Judaism, um, so they were upset. The captain of the temple guard, well, I kind of see him like the church administrator, and he didn't like all the disruption in the temple, so he was upset. Well, since it was evening, they decided that they would just put Peter 
and John in jail. But many heard the message that day, and 5,000 came to know him. The next day, as the rulers and the elders and the teachers met in Jerusalem, they brought Peter and John in for questioning. And they said, by what power or what name do you do this? And Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, told them it was the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and that the man who had been a beggar stood and was healed in his name. He also told them that salvation was found in no one else, and it was by no other name other than Jesus that they could be saved. And this is where our passage of scripture begins. Verse 13. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished, and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. Well, Peter and John were just regular guys. They were unschooled and ordinary. Um, they didn't receive any special training in the rabbinical schools. And do you know that in the first century, um, there was a Jewish law that forbade punishing an unschooled person for the first offense, assuming they acted in ignorance. Instead, they would take that person, they would instruct them, and then if a second offense occurred, they would be punished. So this policy was followed here, and Peter and John were warned and threatened. Well, I think it's safe to say most of us are ordinary people. Um, some of you might have been educated in prestigious Ivy League schools, um, but I wasn't. And I don't think that Peter and John were that different from us. In verse 14, we read, but since they could see the man who had been healed standing there with them, there was nothing they could say. These people knew the man before he'd been healed by Peter and John. What about people who knew you before you knew Christ? Will they see a difference in you? I know that sometimes I don't like to think about my BC or my before Christ days, but God will give us opportunities sometimes when we see these people to tell our story, to tell how Christ has changed us. Now, in verses 15 and 17, I'd like to read to you from the message. They sent them out of the room so they could work out a plan. They talked it over. What can we do with these men? By now, it's known all over town that a miracle had occurred and that they're behind it. There's no way we can refute that. But so that it doesn't go any further, let's silence them with threats so they won't dare to use Jesus' name ever again with anyone. Well, Peter and John were sent out so the Sanhedrin could talk about how they were going to deal with this. Um, the people were familiar again with the man, and they knew that he'd been healed miraculously. So they just couldn't deny it. But to keep it from going any further, remember, 3,000 had been saved and 5,000 were saved. They decided that they would tell Peter and John that they couldn't speak or teach using Jesus' name. Now, I found out, which I didn't know, that this during this time it wasn't uncommon for people to call upon the name of pagan gods or goddesses or deities or have charms or amulets. It was a time of mysticism. And so it wasn't so much that it was unusual that Peter and John were calling on the name, a name, the name of Jesus, but what was different is that there was proof of the power of Jesus in the man who was standing here and been healed. And each day there were more followers in Christ. Well, people couldn't argue with your story either. If you told them about something that God had done in your life and you told them about the proof, 
They can't refute it. I know that God takes care of me. And even if people don't believe it, when I give them the proof, there's not a lot they can say. Then they called them in again and they commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, judge for yourselves whether it is right in God's sight to obey you rather than God. For we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. Well, when they broke the news to Peter and John that they couldn't use Jesus' name anymore, Peter and John replied that they, the leaders, had to decide which was better, to obey God or to obey them. Because they said they couldn't help but speak about the things they had heard and the things they had seen. Not only had they caused a disturbance and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, they actually told the people, the leaders there, that they had put Christ to death and that they weren't going to keep quiet about it. If they had chose between obeying God or man, this religious group, the Sadducees were a religious group, would have understood that it was a no-brainer. Well, how many things happen to you that you can't help but share? I can tell you that if I have a 30% coupon from Kohl's and a gift card and I get all kinds of great deals, you know that I can't wait to go to work the next day to tell everybody in the office. Or someone will come up to me and say, oh, I like your purse. And I'll say, oh, I got it in Ross for 10 bucks. I can't help but tell people. But you know, God has really had to deal with me, um, and he still deals with me, um, in being transparent and sharing what he's doing in my life. Because sometimes if I share about what God's doing in my life, I have to share about the mistakes that I've made or the struggles that I've gone through. And um, I don't always like to do that. And it can be intimidating to share our story. And I don't mean, um, you know, learning all the verses in Romans to use the Romans road to lead somebody to Christ. I just mean, tell your story. How has God answered prayer in your life? How did he help you as you healed from divorce or a broken heart? How did he teach you about grace and mercy and when someone said something that was so hurtful to you and didn't care, how did you not respond in anger? You know, these are the things that people deal with every day. We all deal with them every day. That's real life. But the thing is that there are people that don't know that God cares about that and that God's willing to work in us. Well, this week I was feeling kind of overwhelmed um, as I got prepared because, you know, I'd never want to let Pastor Steve down. And uh, I would never want you to go home hungry or unchallenged. And then Friday night I attended a study and we watched a DVD by Andy Stanley. And he preached on the passage of scripture where Jesus healed the 5,000 with five loaves and two fishes. Now the disciples wanted to send the people home to eat, but Jesus said, oh, you feed them. And then Jesus said, bring them to me, the loaves and the fishes. And he blessed them, and then he gave them back to the disciples, and the disciples handed out the food. And everybody got fed, and there were some left over. Well, I had to give my fear, my fear of failure and embarrassment to Jesus. And when I did that, he gave me the scripture, and then I had to do what I already know how to do, talk. <laughs> well, Easter and the resurrection and Pentecost brought changes in my life that I couldn't live without. But again, not everybody knows that. Not everyone knows that Jesus died on the cross, that he bore our sins, that he rose from the dead, and that he conquered sin 
And our God's not dead. He's surely alive. And you know, there might be people that don't know why they feel lousy about themselves all the, so all the time. When we know it's because they're dragging sin with them that they just weren't designed to carry. You know, God's plan for the spread of the gospel includes us. We're to be his witnesses. And better than that, we're to be his ambassadors. So what's God done in your life lately? How's he answered prayer in your life? I want you to tell me now. Who can tell me a way that God answered prayer in your life? Anybody? Yeah? Amen. He saved your marriage. Anybody have anything else? He healed sickness. Amen. Oh, amen, Nevada. Yes, he does. Anybody else? Yes, Shirley. Found your home. Amen. You know, that's a really important thing. You know, God helped me find my home when I thought that I wouldn't find one. And it was so much more than I ever asked him for. And uh, I'm so blessed. Anybody else have an answer to prayer? two beautiful, healthy daughters. I know sometimes I take that for granted with my children. But you know, we all have a story. And not just about what happened to us a long time ago, but the things that God is doing in our life today, what he did yesterday. He always wants to work in our life. And he wants us to just tell our story. During the first service, someone shared that God had given him the power to quit smoking, and he'd been smoking for, I forget how many years, a whole lot of years. You know, people need to know that. We all struggle. After further threats, they let them go. They could not decide how to punish them because all the people were praising God for what had happened. For the man who was miraculously healed was over 40 years old. You know, you might not ever bring physical healing to somebody the way that Peter and John did, but you can offer somebody healing for their heart. And only Jesus can bring that. And it's what he's called us to do. And we can do that just by telling our story. So how has Easter changed your life? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you this day, Lord, for our many blessings. Lord, for the way that you've intervened in our lives, Lord. We can see your hand. And Lord, those days when we can't see your hand, Lord, we ask that you be patient with us. Lord, help us to spread the word of the gospel, Lord, not just by all the Bible verses, Lord, which are so important because your word is alive. But Lord, by our story, by sharing what you've done in our lives, by how you've changed us, Lord, help us to be in tune to the opportunities that you give us each day, Lord, and give us boldness. Lord, we're ordinary guys and girls, just like Peter and John, but Lord, we long to serve you. And we love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. worship by singing one more song so if you are able you can stand and the uh, words should be on the screen we're going to sing because he lives God sent his son they called him Jesus he came to love heal and forgive he lived and died to buy my pardon An empty grave is there To prove my Savior lives Because he lives I can face tomorrow Because he lives I'll fear him 
Way to 